So welcome to Music City Multicon. Hope y'all having a good time. Um, tonight we're going to talk about DC Extended Universe, the movies, what's good about them, what's uh, not so good, hopefully what's coming down the pike, um, some exciting things. So we're just going to go around um, and we'll, we'll get, your, get your comments too. So we'll do a brief introduction. I'm David Corgan and I'm running the uh, Music City Multicon along with my wife Julia. And uh, so I'll put myself on the panel because <laughs> I could. So. Uh, my name is Dan Jolly and I've been a professional writer for a little better than 30 years now. I started out writing comic books and never really quit. Um, but uh, from there, transitioned into writing novels and working on video games and a whole bunch of different stuff. Uh, probably most well known, at least as far as DC goes, for co-creating the current incarnation of the DC character Firestorm, oh. um, who you can see on like Legends of Tomorrow and in various video games. They changed his name for the, in the TV show so that they wouldn't have to pay me. But then someone used the correct name in the video games that he showed up in, and now I get checks. <laughs> nice. Hey, good evening, everybody. My name is Whitney Roberts. I'm a co-host of a, the Broken Token uh, Classic Arcade and Pinball podcast. Uh, we talk about video games, pinball, uh, a lot of pop culture snuck in there in between. And uh, we're definitely big uh, comic fans, movie buffs. And uh, we love to spend a lot of our time talking about DC and Marvel uh, just in our downtime. Probably more so than we should, but it's so much fun. So love the comic movies, grew up uh, reading comics as a, as, a, as a kid and uh, you know, adolescent, young adult. Uh, it's in my blood. It's the best way to say it. So. All right. Cool. So, you know, I guess the current DC Extended Universe started with Man of Steel, right? Um, I thought it was a pretty decent movie. Yeah, not the best. Not really the Superman that that I wanted to see, but I, you know, they kicked it off pretty good. Um, that led us down a path of you know Batman versus Superman. Uh -huh. uh, you got into the Justice League stuff. Now we have a Snyder cut. Yes. Wonder Woman, Aquaman. Uh, Shazam was kind of hanging out there. Yeah. Um, so there's there's a lot that there's encompassed you know this this universe some of it it's kind of been redone in the middle of it yeah I mean and if you look at the Suicide Squad I mean that's it's redone itself yeah yeah it once over so oddly enough but yeah so I think um, so what's your thoughts on on Man of Steel just to start start there with the character the way they portrayed Superman in this go around well I. I it's it's my favorite in, incarnation of Superman. I, I think uh, we, we've discussed amongst friends that I like my heroes uh, dark and brooding. I like them uh, having a troubled life, and I, I like to see the struggle because I think there's benefit in the struggle. So, uh, I mean, I love Superman from 78 on up, uh, and you know, Christopher Reeves, I think, did a fantastic job, but I just, I just love the, the troubled, conflicted hero I think it just makes it so much more of an interesting story, and it's maybe that's a more modern a more modern take on it. But uh, I I really dig, really really like the Man of Steel in in how they portrayed Kal El. I hated it so much. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I knew that was coming. So much. It's so like, what did like, they get wrong about it? Exactly. Yeah, I'm curious as to, I'm curious as to what didn't sit with you on that. Ma and Pa Kent, the way, the, the stuff that they told him, oh, well, you don't owe the world anything. Uh, let the kids in the school bus drown rather than let the world know who you are. Oh, no, don't use your powers to save me. You have to keep secret. I'll die in a tornado for no reason. The, that's a good point. The, I, you're the, right. Yep, the, that's the, a good point. The logic in it, the, there was no logic. It didn't make sense. Um, he could have done, he could have saved his father and no one would have known the difference because he could have moved really fast. Um, I thought it missed the point of what Superman traditionally is so bad. 
<laughs> I mean, I'm like 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 Madeline Kahn in Clue, flames on the side of my face. <laughs> it was I it it, uh, it made me grind my teeth. So you're you're bringing me some callbacks now of how, what I felt when I watched that movie originally. <laughs> yeah. So there was there was parts I loved about you know the character of Superman, but then I felt like there was so much lazy writing or just bad writing. And that plagues most of these movies, uh, just foreshadowing there. But um, but yeah, there there was there was a lot with that part of it, in particular. It just just felt off the mark. Yeah, I, I, thinking back on that now that you talk about how, especially Pa Kemp was portrayed. I think Kevin Costner, fantastic actor. Mm -hmm. uh, but you're right that the the writing was was tough because I, I feel like they they tried to push a more, mo a more modern approach to the storyline to make it approachable for more audiences. And it was, it was nice to see that modern take on it. But, uh, but yeah, that, that is a good point. I mean, he was, he, was almost, uh, he was almost repressed to the point to where he, couldn't, he could not be who he was. And I think that created a lot of the conflict that we saw within the character. And they they could have they could have done a lot i but overall i still did i, I like the movie if if i was asked would you like to sit down and watch it again i would yeah i, I mean I, I i would not stop you <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. is it the battle is it is it you know the the fighting that, no because the, the, yeah, the way honestly, they portrayed the powers of I, superman I, you know honestly i thought that the battle towards the end was so over the top that it was it was almost uninteresting because they they were so evenly matched to the point to where there was there was no real um there, there was no real benefit in watching that protracted and drawn out fight mm -hmm. scene when at the end at the end of all of it one of the two of them could could have ended it very quickly i felt that that entire scene how many ever minutes that was, if it was compressed down to 13 seconds, it would have yielded the exact same result, okay? <laughs> but all of that being said, I still liked Henry Cavill's portrayal of Superman. I liked the fact that he did, he had a lot of soul searching to do. I liked the fact that he just didn't fold, he, he just didn't fold into the character immediately. But at the same point, uh, especially now that we're talking about it, DC just missed the mark with with the overall story, the overarching story that they could have told there, and in, in how they could have connected it. Um, I, you I, have high hopes that just really weren't realized overall. I also liked Cavill's portrayal. Mm -hmm. um, he looks like Superman. He's oh yeah, a fine actor. Yeah, uh, I wish they'd put him in a Superman movie. Yeah, I get it. And I mean, okay, correct me if I'm wrong because I don't honestly. I think I've blotted a lot of it out. <laughs> <laughs> that could be the case well, for me too. Um, honestly, talking about it brings a lot of it back for me. Yeah. But didn't Snyder say that he like really deliberately didn't pay any attention to who Superman was? I, th I feel like that's been the modern take of a lot of writers who are just like, oh, we want to throw away the character and just do this new thing yes and that that's always bad yes with, it a, is. with a character of that caliber in my yeah. opinion yes well, uh, i feel I, like we've gotten a lot of that in superheroes here lately <laughs> I, I think that might be one one reason one of many reasons why the marvel movies are in general doing so much better than the dceu oh, is because the, the people no there doubt. understand who the characters are yes and they, they and they have a connected storyline that you feel you feel invested in no matter where you are in the storyline where the DC movies have let me down is and probably, well, I don't want to generalize and, and, and speak for everybody. No, but, go, go for it. That's okay. Fine. Fair enough. I will. There, there is, <laughs> there really is no overarching storyline. And, and I think that's what I, I really lament about it. I, we had it in man of steel and then Batman versus Superman leading into wonder woman tangentially connected and then into Justice League, but it's still, they, they tried to world build just almost like mixing Kool-Aid. There, well, there, was, there, was no, there was no lead up to it. You, you were just dropped into yeah, the cup. Well, I think they did it too fast. They did it way too fast. Uh, because like, 
for maybe maybe it's still going on, but when I was really active in comics, a lot of companies tried to start their own superhero universes with like this big event, uh-huh. like build the whole universe at the same time. And that's not how the original comics came to be. Um, the original Superman had nothing to do with Batman, which had nothing to do with Wonder Woman, which had nothing to do with Aquaman. Right. They were all completely separate things and they built their own stories over time Mm -hmm. and then at some point once all of that had been established some editor somewhere probably i don't know archie goodwin um said hey we have these popular series why don't we do a crossover and that's what became well first the justice society Mm -hmm. and and ultimately the justice league um and you know marvel kind of did that because they started out with iron man which was tangentially related you know they did weave the thread in but they 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 tried to follow kind of the same trajectory as opposed to dc which was like okay here's man of steel and now there's justice league yeah yeah Uh, let's cram all this in together yeah well and a lot of it starts to break down when you when you look at how they've crossed over some of this too like superman doesn't need a, a crew He's Superman. He's you know, super, everyone else is just kind of hanging around. Yeah. And you have to write some kind of scenario to use everybody. Yes. You know. Yeah, it, it feels very forced because if if we take the Mar- if we take the MCU by comparison where they have deliberately rolled the, rolled the story in a certain way and the movies in a certain way and they have allowed you to become invested in that universe and those characters over time, DC just they, they, they just dropped a bunch of Play-Doh on the table and said, you know, PG-13 yeah. and, and rolled with it. And I, it's, it's tough because I love the characters. I, I, I do. I love the DC characters and I want to love all of the movies, but there's, there's definitely some, uh, some pick and choose in there going well, on. And it's really hard to write a character as powerful as Superman. It is. Oh yeah. Yes, um, it is. I, I've I wrote to the point to where you care. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, and I haven't written Superman much. I did a few issues of Superman Adventures, and then uh, hmm. fe- featured him in uh, an Elseworlds project. But um, you have a character that's that powerful. I mean, at the end of Justice League, did Aquaman and Batman and Wonder Woman and the Flash really need to be there to stop the uh, big head guy? Yeah. Steppenwolf? No, no not no, really. No, no, it, no. Superman finally deigned to show up, and uh, you know, I mean, he, he got, he got his down. mind right, and then he and, could do something. And it was, uh, and as much as I absolutely love Infinity War and Endgame, Captain Marvel, it's the same way. Uh huh. You know, at, at one point, Peter Parker is like, "Well, I don't know how you're going to get the gauntlet through all those people." Well, she just killed an entire starship. Yeah, I think she'll be okay. <laughs> Um, I, I didn't really have much of a point past it's hard to write a character that's powerful. <laughs> yeah. And well, and, and you know, something on the MCU side, it was it's tough to write Captain Marvel as well because by the time she's introduced and by the time that you see what, what her capabilities are, you're kind of like, man, there's really no emotional investment there. She, they just show up. <laughs> well, it's just, you have just to, all powerful. The, the, you have to, to put them in situations uh, either involving enormous cosmic threats Uh-huh. Or, or personal struggles. Or personal struggles. Well, exactly. And, and, and that loops all the way back around to why why I did like Cavill's portrayal of Superman, because at least there was that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. at least there was that. I'm kind of curious, though, if, if we roll forward on, on the DCEU, um, what what is your take on on uh, on Batman as he's portrayed in the DCEU? I mean, a lot of people are very polarized on Ben Affleck's portrayal of Batman, whether he's whether he's good, whether he's bad, he's the, whether he's the best or not. I'm kind of curious as to your all's take on on how that character has been portrayed. I found myself not caring about it very much, <laughs> honestly. Um, and it's just I thought Batman versus Superman was kind of stupid too. <laughs> um, and I mean, you know, when you're when you're oh oh, it was yeah, I give you that. 
when you're a writer, you know, it's like it's like when you when you're a hammer, everything looks like a nail. When you're, when you're a writer, <laughs> I think that's the DC you summarized is well, what it is. It's, you know, I, I can't. It's it's hard for a writer to really enjoy just enjoy a story because I yeah. got to dig into it and analyze it and pick it apart and like, well, they did this part wrong, and well, I probably would have done it this way. Um, uh, why didn't Wonder Woman use the spear? Yeah. Come on. Oh no, I have to use kryptonite because it's so no, give it to her. She's fine with it. <laughs> yeah. She she Duh. can she can carry that. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, the the plot totally sucked, but I love <laughs> I, I, I love the portrayal of Batman. Yes. I just wish he was in a different movie. I, I, I wish I wish he had been but, used differently because Personally, I, I I do like the the grizzled approach that, that he that he had. Uh, the fact that you saw him walking around in a trench coat with goggles on in a sandstorm, and he was still in the bat suit. I'm like, that's actually pretty ingenious. That's dedication. You know? That's what dedication that is. is what that is. And you know, overall, I, I thought that you know, all the all the growling aside, I, I thought that he wasn't a bad. Batman. I mean, there's been far worse Batman. Oh, yeah. There's, there's no doubt about it. Oh, well, yeah. 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 There's been far worse. So I, I liked. He seemed more, I hate to say, believable Batman because that's maybe not, but he was, he was less Bat Ninja. Yes. And um, you could kind of see, like, okay, he's, he's Bruce Wayne. Yeah. You know, and he's, he's going around, he's doing some detective work. Uh huh. So. Yeah. You know, I, I like I like those aspects of Batman because you know this. I, I love the old Batman sixty six stuff. Oh yes, things. yes, it's that, good. It's very good. And you know, he's he's not a ninja. He's just a dude who can can throw some punches pretty well. Yeah. But uh, he's got crazy gadgets. But he doesn't have to be a super strong punch through walls ninja maniac. No, and and, and I mean Adam West was exactly the opposite of all right. of that. Yeah, I mean he was he. It took him a long time to get everything out of his utility belt. You know, he sw- and when he threw, he you could, you could tell that they had to help him out with that. So, yeah, but you know something, he was still he was still our Batman. Oh yes, yeah. yes. Well, uh, Tim Burton Batman is is my Batman. I'm I'm, I'm going to be like the the grumpy old man on this panel. There's three of us. Because I, I like seriously when I was a kid, when I was like nine, eight or nine, I think I was watching. Because I watched the Adam West Batman uh-huh. when I got home from school oh, because yeah. that was what was on because mm-hmm. we had three channels mm-hmm. and the other two were showing soap operas. And um, I mean, I didn't, I wasn't really thinking about it very much until they had King Tut, the episode Ooh, King, yes. Tut. King Tut. Oh yeah, King and, Tut. Uh, yeah, not and, the best. And at one point, King Tut picked up the telephone and said, uh, "Operator, connect me with the voice box of the Sphinx." <laughs> and I thought, "Wait a minute." This is crap. <laughs> <laughs> or is it camp? I mean, I don't know. No, it was say it was camp, but <laughs> that's when camp. I that's when I realized I had a severe camp allergy. Okay, oh, I got okay, you. fair enough. Okay, because I'm enough. I'm okay with it to an extent. <laughs> Jim, we need to remember that because we'll we'll get more mileage out of that one. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, is there any salvageable character from the DC? universe currently wonder woman I, aquaman flash they're all salvageable yeah with the current actors current um current story what what, what do you like any I, I personally i thought the first wonder woman movie was mostly fantastic um the the villain set up on it was wasted she she did not have a good villain to fight in that's that movie. that's true but overall, the movie was. Re- I thought. I thought the movie was very good. Mm-hmm. Um, I, honestly, right now, I'm really looking forward to Black Adam, and I'm, yeah. I and I, I want The Rock to save it all. And I think he. I think he may actually have a shot. If anyone can save it all, it's The Rock. It's The Rock. There's no doubt. Yeah, I'm looking forward to Black Adam, even though. <laughs> uh, so so right. so there was a DC book that I did called Bloodhound. It okay. was a creator-owned book. No one bought it. I mean, it was the, the the issue when it was canceled. It was the second worst selling book DC put out. Okay, that means we're going to go find it tonight after this panel's over. What that means is there was one worse. Yes, That's it what was that Engine means. Head. <laughs> Engine Head by um, 
uh, the, oh, I'm blanking on his name. Anyway, uh, the point is, years after that was canceled, um, Dark Horse, I, I took it to Dark Horse, did a second vol volume, and uh, they were, they decided to try to develop it for, for film. Okay. And uh, they have, they, they don't, they don't like send it to a whole bunch of different people. They pick one high value target and pursue that target until they say no. And the target they pursued for Bloodhound was Dwayne Johnson. And it made it through his agent and his development executive and it landed on his desk. And it came down to, do you want to do this or Black Adam? Hmm. And Dwayne Johnson was like, comic book I've never heard of before. Black Adam. Really is the Black Adam. And, yeah. like, yeah, and, and I'm like, that's fair. Yeah. I, mean, that's, that's, I can't yeah, wait. I, mean, well, I, I would have made the same decision probably well, he, in his shoes. He, he is obviously invested in the character because if, yeah. you, if you've seen the fandom trailer, I mean, he says, I was born to play Black Adam. Mm -hmm. So he is emotionally invested in this character, and yeah. I have high expectations for, for what he brings to the table. Yeah, I can't wait to see it. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Hopefully that means that if he sees a, a script that looks like garbage, he can go back and say, hey, no. Yeah. <laughs> it depends on whether he's a producer or not. So. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. But, so, I mean, he, he could easily be a producer at this oh, point. Oh, if yes. he felt like there's, there's if he, no doubt. If he said, I'll star in your movie as long as I can be a producer. I'm like, yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So do you think Black Adam is going to tie into Superman, these other guys, or do you think they're just going to tie in Shazam Good and kind of have it off to well, its own Shazam's for a Shazam's already tied into Superman. Superman showed up at the end of the Shazam. That's true. Movie. He did. It's true. Or, or at least the, the most of three quarters, five sixths of him showed yeah. up. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Minus the head. So, uh, I mean, like to, to, to go back to your earlier question, all of this stuff is salvageable. It's just, it's all been the victim of really, really bad scripts. Hmm. Yeah. And not all. I agree with you. I really like the first Wonder Woman movie. Yeah. I was pretty much okay with Aquaman. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Jason Momoa is an incredibly charismatic actor. He, he, he really is. He, um, he has swagger for that character. There's yeah. no doubt. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I really enjoyed Shazam. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Shazam was great. I, I was Shazam really was pleased fun. with, with yeah. Shazam. Yeah, Shazam was good. I liked it a lot. You know, the, the problem is now, so we have a completely different Batman coming out. We do. So... And, of course, they had a couple of Jokers mixed, mixed in there. With, the, the Joker situation is so confusing to me right now. It's, it's just, it's weird. So I don't know how you tie, like, a, a proper Justice League Batman back in if you keep Superman and you keep Wonder Woman, or you just let Batman go for a while and then... I can, I, and, then, and then reeling back in, I don't how, know. How would you write this? Yeah, how yeah, would you fix yeah, this? Yeah, yeah, how, yeah, how would you salvage this? Well, here's the thing. Uh, unlike Marvel... Warner Brothers is really not that concerned with internal continuity between their properties. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. why you can have the Harley Quinn animated series and then the Harley Quinn that was on Batman, the animated series. Um, I, well, I was trying, I, I write video game stuff sometimes, and um, I was trying out for um, a Suicide Squad video game. Okay. And so I wrote a scene with, uh, with Harley Quinn and sent it in. And then they came back and said, this is good, but for this game, we want to focus, we want to make her like 85% Dr. Harleen Quinzel. And Harley only comes out like under stress. Okay. Which is, which is fine. It's a valid interpretation of the character, but it's a very different interpretation of the character. Yeah. Um, so, you know, yeah, jo uh, Joaquin Phoenix is Joker. Not really much to do with anything. Do they care? Yeah. No. So uh, if the Robert Pattinson Batman doesn't really fit in with the rest of it, yeah. are they going to care? No. And, and and I guess after after watching all of the Marvel movies and being in, so invested in that in, in the continuity that is that is the MCU, mm -hmm. I think that's what disappoints me most about the DCEU is the fact that they don't care about the continuity and they really don't care about it doesn't seem like they care about the characters enough or there there is a or there's an overarching storyline that that would pay off for for the for the movie goer and that's really what kind of bums me out overall well i think that the approach that they <clears throat> that they oh excuse me you're oh, choking it's not that they don't care about the characters, it's that they want to give the 
filmmakers autonomy to bring their own interpretation. Okay. Uh, you know, they don't have Kevin Feige, um, right. You know, smiting yeah. people with his continuity scepter. <laughs> they um, need a Kevin and, Feige and a scepter. I think they need a little bit of that. Yeah. He's, he's doing a great job. Yes, he is. Yes. But they, but they he, don't he, have he wields voice. that scepter with, I mean, with, Ab- with with no abandon, yeah, right. I mean, he's he's on it. Yeah. yeah, they go out of their way to tie every single thing in, yes, even if do. it's like, hey, we got to stick this guy in here for five minutes to tie it in. Uh-huh. They tie it in somehow. Yeah. Well, I mean, you you do bring up an interesting point though, because I, I, I guess at this point, I want that I want that payoff, and I mean, I, I mean, I'm speaking for myself because because well, I can I guess at this point, but. Ultimately, I just I just want there to be more. I, I, just, I don't I just don't have the the emotional payoff of rewatching so many interpretations of the same character over and over and over again. I, I mean, I, I think that's the reason why I love I, I love the you know the, the depiction of Iron Man and Captain America so much because we got to see those characters stay the same quote unquote base character throughout 20 some odd movies yeah. and it's like that's my iron man it with the dceu it could be one of four supermen or batman and it's and it's just it's just yep. tough yeah and one thing this is this is a complaint that i've had about about comics in general for a long time having written for comics mm-hmm. um when you have a series that is meant to run forever it's gonna screw up Yep. If you if you have a character that is a cash cow like Wonder Woman, yeah, and they're never going to let it go out of print because if they did, they lose the rights. Yeah. Um, then you, the ideas get stale. Yes. You get yeah. ideas that are recycled, or you get things that are so crazy that they don't actually work uh-huh. so well, like Superman Red and Superman Blue. <laughs> um, and I really like this about. <laughs> Both, honestly, both the DCEU and the MCU is because they are naturally self-limiting because they involve human actors. <laughs> and those actors are going to get tired of playing the same roles or they're going to get fired at some point. I guess someone might. Yeah. Uh, or they're just, they, you know, they, uh, they don't, their contract doesn't get renewed or they choose not to renew their right. contract. Uh, that would be and, Ryan Reynolds. Yes. And uh, <laughs> it's Robert Downey Jr. You know, that's true. He's too. done an awful lot of Iron Man. Yes, he has. But because he's going to move on, then we get Riri Williams. Yeah. Which I'm really excited about. Yeah. yeah. And uh, the, the, the stories, stories should have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Uh-huh. If there's no end to the story, it's not as satisfying as it could be. And well, uh, I'm just I, I'm just really excited to see like the next ten years of what happens in the movies. Yeah, so I think I think that's why we didn't get a good ending for for DC yet. We didn't get really any kind of payoff yet, and got, you know we got the Snyder cut, which which I saw, and um, it was a thing. It was a thing, and I kind of liked it better, but it didn't redeem anything for me. Um, it it kind of just brought back feelings of oh man they. They did another take on the same, and there's still problems in it. You know, they, they, I don't. Maybe you couldn't have fixed it all at this point. Yeah. Uh, okay. All right. So, see if this is just me. So, Darkseid found out where the planet with the uh, anti-life equation was, and then left and forgot. Did he? Did he lose the map? Did, did like he could have just come back at any point, right? He's probably got a lot going on. I mean, yeah, it's just. Kind of- <laughs> <laughs> he's a busy guy. His, his outlook is full. Well, when you're up there, you know, you're just like, uh, you know, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, the, the yeah, the van, that, vantage point problem, I guess. The, I don't know. The thing that he's been like questing for his entire existence. Yeah. Just, uh, I'll get to it. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like they, right. I, I guess they had that Infinity War type of thing they were trying to build to, and they tried to clarify some of it with the Snyder cut. But but even clarifying it, where where does that lead you? Because there's no movie following it that we know of, at that, least yet. Yeah. Y- yeah, exactly. And then if there is, then what does that mean for the rest of the movies that that follow on on the other path of the, or the non Snyderverse path, like right. the Flash and, and other movies that are not or we assume are not going to be part of the Snyderverse? 
then it just gets it gets split again and again and again, and uh, it, it becomes confusing uh, at the very least. <laughs> Yeah, so it seems like they're abandoning the, the, the Snyder verse, yeah. I would assume. And, you know, maybe Warner Brothers doesn't care about... It seemed like they cared at one point about building that, but maybe yeah. maybe they've decided, hey, we're not we're not into that anymore. We're not into that anymore. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, I think a lot's going to depend on how much money the, the new Batman movie makes. I will be there. I'm yes. excited. Yeah, the, I mean, the, tra the trailer looks fantastic. So let's talk yes. about that trailer. The uh, the Mad Max style hot rod yes. Batmobile. It looks like a Camaro. Looks looks pretty sharp to me. I, see, I like that, but I know there's there's people that like the jet powered Tim Burton. There's people that like the Tumbler. Oh, the Tumbler was awesome. I like I like the Tumbler. What do you like put the, the top? Like Tumbler? Tumbler? Is Tumbler? I like Tumbler the top. I like the Tumbler. Yeah, it was it was pretty sharp. <laughs> I mean that that was a little crazy though, right? I mean it's you're driving around a tank. I could see the Camaro maybe like yeah. Well, it didn't have treads, you know. It wasn't well, okay, you know, it was not a tank it technically, wheels. but a motorcycle came out of it. It yeah. sure did. It sure <laughs> so, did. Yeah, that was. I mean, you got to admit that was pretty sweet. The craziest looking motorcycle with like a wheel this big, yeah. which physically is probably you can't even drive the thing. But yeah, okay. he did it. I, 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 I watched the, the the targeting sequence with the tumbler like a whole bunch of times, and okay. I still don't understand it. Like, okay, we get into the weapon system here, and so you have to sink down into the dashboard and like crank your neck real hard oh, yeah. like what what yeah. why why yeah it, it doesn't really work because it was cool because it was cool because i've seen enough cool. transformers yeah. to know that, that that doesn't really work yeah like what they were trying to do it, with it's, that it's motorcycle. almost like the tardis the inside does not equal the outside <laughs> yeah yeah it, they, it's physically impossible for those things to, to work that way <laughs> but yeah i find no fault with those movies so it, it's fine that to me that's like the pinnacle trilogy of well, I mean, if that's all I can complain about, I mean, that's not. Yeah, I mean, yeah, ex exactly. So. I, yeah, I, I do believe the Dark Knight trilogy is uh, it's worthy of standing on its own because it's, it's pretty fantastic. I didn't like the third one, but the first two are really, really good. Yes, they were. I give the third one a lot of a lot of leeway just because the first two, yeah, honestly. Yeah. So it's well, and of course they. I mean, you, you knew that they had to draw it to an end, and yes, leeway. Yeah. Yeah. You had to because it, they had two hours. They had to wrap it up. So, so it, maybe they're going back to what works. So you know you had a great Batman trilogy, and so now you have a completely, you know, another offshoot of a Batman. Yes, I'm sure they're writing it as a trilogy. And you know, um, it seems like they're giving us a really radically different interpretation of the Riddler for this. Yes, um, but I'm okay with that because I always thought the Riddler was really goofy. And not threatening in even the tiniest way. Mm -hmm. So yeah, well, um, in, on, in Batman sixty six, correct? Yes, very much. <laughs> well, and Jim Carrey didn't really help yeah. that out. No, much, that's that's true. That's very no, true. I mean, Jim Carrey as well. I, I like Jim Carrey, but I mean, he he that was not threatening. Yeah, no. Yeah. The yeah. mind control. What, what was it? Some mind reading device. Who yeah, knows? I mean, it's just a long track record of bad writing here, but. <laughs> Well, what did you all think about the uh, the Crisis on Infinite Earths crossover with Ezra Miller's Flash and the uh, the CW's Flash with Grant Gustin, where they actually tied the Arrowverse into the DCU with the appearance of both Flashes together? So, what what, what do you all think about the Arrowverse uh, the Arrowverse shows? Uh, have you have you watched a lot of them? Invested time in them? Uh, okay, time to be grumpy again. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> not that I haven't, not that I've stopped being grumpy. Um, I, I watched Arrow for the first several seasons, and I watched uh, Supergirl f to begin with, and I mm -hmm. watched Black Lightning to begin with. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me that the Berlanti shows follow the same trajectory. They have really amazing first seasons. And the second season is pretty good, mm -hmm. and somewhere around the third or fourth season, gets, they, they just get lost. They just stop caring. Yeah, they they do. Supergirl was really bad that way. It just it it just got muddled. <laughs> and I mean, and I was watching Legends of Tomorrow because you know it features this character that I co-created. Oh yeah. Um, and I think the point that lost me was when uh, uh, Heatwave. What's his name? Heatwave mm -hmm. with the heat gun. Mm -hmm. The, uh, a bunch of zombies are running toward them, and the the one guy who is equipped to deal with a horde of zombies better than anybody else 
switches his gun to his offhand and punches a zombie instead. And the zombie immediately bites him. <laughs> and I was like, nope, rage quit. <laughs> rage quit. <laughs> and and that's, that's, that's how I have felt about all of the Berlantiverse shows that I've watched. Huh. Really strong beginnings. Peter out, get dumb, and I quit watching. So I did not watch the Infinite Earths okay. crossover. Okay. Now, do you think they switch writers at some point, or um, do you think what do you? How do you think this falls apart? I I haven't paid attention. Or they to just the, get they just they basically came up with two seasons worth of stuff, and then they just kind of threw some crap together for the last. That may be that may be accurate, um, because to to pitch a show. Yeah you need to outline the whole first season and then give a pretty solid uh, indication of where the second season's going. Yeah. And that is what will get you a show greenlit. And once you get the show greenlit, well, then you do have to come up with seasons after that if it continues. Yeah. And they may not have planned out, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I, years ago, I heard about a well-known writer who shall remain nameless because I'm probably already getting myself in enough trouble as it is. Um, <laughs> no one's going to see this. Don't worry. <laughs> but this, but this really well-known writer um, would, would, would get a series and do a four issue or four five issue arc, really put all his, all his writing muscle into it. Just make it amazing. And then jam out the rest of the year over the course of about two weeks and get paid for all of those scripts up front mm -hmm. and then go on to some other project. And so, you know, you read this amazing first arc and then, then you're thinking, okay, oh, what's up with the quality here? What's, what's, oh crap, what is this? It is crap. <laughs> um, and so um, that, that might, something similar to that might be their, their model for okay. those shows. I don't, yeah. I don't know, that's your speculation. For, for me, having watched all of Arrow, all of Supergirl, all of The Flash, at least you know, up to current, all of Legend, Legends of Tomorrow, I, I will agree, extremely strong starts to all of those shows. Um, Arrow, I, I, I dearly loved it until season four, season five, and then it just, it, it just gets in this cycle where everything that they build up through a season just seems to get flushed and then they kind of start over again with a bit of an alternate uh, an alternate plot then they go again they eventually tie it all together but you have to waddle through so many shows to, to get to the payoff there supergirl I, I i don't i honestly i don't even know what happened with that show it just went off the rails and just got it just got weird just really weird in the flash though I love that show, but they recycled the same villain in, in different iterations yeah. over and over again. I mean, it seems like the only villain that Barry can fight is another speedster. And it just, I, well, okay, I don't know, gonna, it, it just got to be tough to watch after a while. Well, I'll make a bold statement here. The Flash is too powerful to be a good guy. He's too powerful to write as a protagonist and give him believable obstacles to overcome. Mm-hmm. Um, so what he does is create his own blundering issues that take two seasons to fit, to straighten out. Yeah. And then they yeah. still don't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, really, well, I'm, so the flash is awful. It's no, actually I, I really like it. Well, but, you know, people keep coming back to it because the characters are well drawn. They're, mm -hmm. they're engaging. I mean, it, honestly, that's why you, in any kind of anything that's continuing, you come back for the characters. Mm -hmm. You don't come back for the plot. Yeah. You don't come back for the world. If, some, if, you, if you ask somebody what their favorite part of Star Trek is, they're going to say Captain Picard or James T. Kirk or Spock or, or whatever. They're going to say Kirk. They're, they're not. They're, they're not, not going to say. Anything. They're, they're <laughs> not going to say. They're not going to say. I, I love how the the warp nacelles fold up and the ship goes into warp. You know, they're not going to say. Right. Oh, I love the the, the transporter buffer. Um, it's the character. It's the character. It's always the characters. Yeah. So when you've got a show like The Flash, which even in the first season was so dumb, <laughs> the, the plots were so dumb. I can move faster than uh, the speed of sound, and I can't take a gun out of a guy's hand. Mm -hmm. Captain Cold? 
Really? Now, was that just the typical I'm learning to be a superhero thing, or was it just like, just bad? Well, earlier in the same episode, he took the guns out of a whole bunch of terrorists' hands. Okay, so he forgot how to do it. Oh, uh, yeah, okay. he forgot. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's, it's tough to keep track of all this stuff. It's, it's writer's block. It's dumb. Yeah. Uh, but but that's that's why I've, I've never, uh, well, okay, one of the reasons why. Another thing is no one's ever offered to let me write The Flash. Uh, but I would never want to write a, a story featuring a speedster that fast because there's not realistically any obstacle that he couldn't overcome. The, the Flash is more powerful than Superman. Superman can't, well, he's not that fast and he can't travel through time the way the Flash does. And, uh, it's, uh, yeah. So you think there's, a, I mean, there, there seems to be a lot of problem with some of these characters where they just, they, they have to power them up over and over over time to where they just they've gotten to a ridiculous amount of power yeah you know we were from where batman and superman stuff started where superman's lifting a car you know and it's like ooh, he, he's like super strong but then he's lifting up a building or you know he's stopping an well, airplane or, or he's stopping yeah, a meteor or he, or he changes the direction of earth's rotation sure he yeah, flies yeah. fast enough and everything yeah, yeah. exactly Although, you know, what finally made that make more sense to me is when someone said, oh, no, he's not, he's not changing the Earth. He's traveling backward in time, and we're just watching the time travel move, fa- move backwards. We're, we're watching time move backwards, okay. as, as he does. Interesting perspective. That's okay. a real fanboy explanation. Okay, all right. Yeah. I can take, I can take that. So we're, we're getting about time. We'll leave a little bit of time for some, for some, some comments, too. But I guess the general take is... Um, the characters are great, but the writing sucks. Is that kind of where we're at? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I still love the characters, though, and I'll still watch because I, I have that I, I have that desire to see the characters done right. Because when they are done right, there's nothing like it in the world. It's it, the stories are the stories can be amazing, but and, and the movies can be amazing, but. And you could take you could take the exact characters from the DCEU movies and give them better stories to be in, and I would be there in a heartbeat. Yep, hundred percent invested. Agreed. And there's there's been fantastic story runs like Long Halloween and some of these. So it's not like you even have to reinvent anything. So yeah, I, it, there's material. A, as a fan, on. sometimes it's puzzling to me. Is like, why did you write that story when you could have just. Uh, straight adapted these and batman versus superman um uh tried to take it from uh frank miller's dark knight returns i mean the armor that bruce wayne's wearing there is straight out of dark knight returns but then they went further with it and they added in a whole lot of other stuff yeah they did yeah so yeah um what about you guys jim i know you got some comments on what you love and hate about them. Suicide Squad. Suicide, Suicide Squad. Squad. Second iteration, or is it going to be a third? Did you like the first Suicide Squad? I liked the second one better than the first. Okay. I, Jim, I would think that if we've got two, nothing's going to stop three. I, I mean, if if they can take that franchise and remix it and make it profitable, I'm sure they could do it again. Or it, it could be, be done, done again. We're a close ball on the and make everybody like it. Like yeah. yeah, yeah. So, who actually watched the um, the Birds of Prey movie? Oh, oh, yes. Yeah. Birds of Prey. Yeah. yeah. I didn't even see it, so <laughs> I meant to. Um, you know, busy sometimes. But yeah. So, how did that? Because that was that was a different take of the characters in Suicide Squad, right? Mm-hmm. There's another offshoot. Same, if I'm understanding it right. Well, the Harley was basically the same. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's the character from Suicide Squad that got her own movie, basically. Yeah. yeah. So it does follow in pretty close with... Does, now, does time, time-wise, does it fit in with Suicide Squad at all? Pretty much, more or less. Pretty much? I mean, well, the, the nature of the movie, the, the nature of uh, Harley, the Harley Quinn, the Birds of Prey movie, even more than Suicide Squad, it's not really designed to be taken seriously. Sure. You know, whereas like everything Snyder does is like deadly serious. I'm so earnest about my being serious. And uh, and the Harley Quinn stuff is just, it's playful. Okay. You know, like, and, and comedy, comedy can break rules that drama can't. Yeah. 
It's like the old Batman. Yeah. Very yeah. true. You know. Well, yeah, yeah. If you, I mean, if you're in a comedy and someone says, "Oh yes, uh, my uncle Richard died in a tragic golf ball washing accident," <laughs> um, well, okay, that's fine. You know, laugh about it, whatever. Uh, Bruce Wayne can't say that in a Zack Snyder movie. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's very true. Very true. He's not written that way, no. is he? Yeah. Any any other comments, questions? Favorite favorite movie out of the the run of DC so or, far, or or alternatively, has the DC EU let you down? <laughs> over and over, sure. over, over and, and over. over, yeah. Uh, okay. Just fun, come up on its own. Yeah, yeah. Shazam was great. It, it really was. was. It, was it was good. good. I think they they rebuild the universe out cinematically. They use that as its core. But Shazam's is such a weird ancillary character for the characters that people would know or associate with. Yeah. 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 He's, yeah, yeah not, not an anchor character, character really. really. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. How, would you, how would you feel if they the DC of the universe, they, they picked a character that was, they were going to get rid of, and you had to write the final show, let's say, like, because, you know, you know, the Flash, it's going to be the very last Flash they're ever going to make you had to write that last episode. Because the Flash mentality of the detective just isn't needed, needed in society anymore. How, would, you, would you enjoy that? I think they need to change characters. You've got to get rid of some of them. The very first comic book property pro project uh, that I ever had, well, no, okay, I did a little 16-page thing, but the first like full-length thing that I had done, uh, published, there was an Aliens Colonial Marine series, hmm. and it was supposed to run for 12 issues, and there were internal problems, and the creative team got fired. So the <laughs> editor the editor called me up when I was a little broke college student and said, hey, uh, can, can you wrap this up in two issues, Make, cut it off in issue 10? And I was like, uh, you're offering to pay me to write comics? Yeah, sure, <laughs> yes, I can do that. Um, is there any particular thing you want to see happen? And he said, uh, Kill them all. <laughs> kill them all. Kill them all. And knowing that you're going to wrap something up is awesome. Yeah. Knowing that you don't have to like leave room for further development. Knowing that you can like get really final with stuff. I would be all over killing the Flash. <laughs> sure. You could probably write him in a way that had gravitas and made you care about the character and allowed you to portray that in a way that everybody else would care about the character. And it's like, this is it. This, this is the swan song right well, here. That would, that's, that would be the plan. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. See, we, we don't get enough of that. And it, it, everything's done just so high level that you, you, just, you just don't really get to explore the character with at least the DC characters with any amount of depth to really create that emotional investment. Well, it's, it's just been tough. The the stakes are never very high. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, right. Yeah, you, it's a you, good you know, point. You know they're not going to kill the main character, or if they do, you know they're going to bring him back. Yeah. Uh, but that that's part of the story, not having a, an ending. Yeah. And you just get a different actor if you just, you know, just offshoot another one, you know. Yeah. 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 Good, good point. Because I've wanted, to, I wanted the DCU to be the MCU, but different, but still like the MCU. And I was so drastically let down that it's, it, it's, it's been tough as a fan. I just I'll want Batman that. in the MCU. That's what I want. They so just import Batman in there so I can get <laughs> a good Batman payoff. Yeah. Cause he could work over there. You know, well, I mean. We are, we are getting Moon Knight. Yes, yeah, I'm, I'm excited for that. It's yeah. a good point, very good point. I mean, not the same character exactly, but kind, but of, kind of. Kind of, yeah. pretty much, pretty much bad. Yeah. Do you think uh, a lot of it has to do with script by committee? Oh, tons of stuff has to do with script by committee. Um, and uh, and the, uh, so the big advantage that M the, the MCU has is that Kevin Feige uh, is the voice, you know, is the one controlling factor. Um, the Warner Brothers films, I think, have a whole lot more input from the studio, and that's a, that's various studio executives, um, and 
changes. Yeah, sometimes that can throw a, throw a monkey in the wrench, to, to paraphrase uh, John McClane from Die Hard. <laughs> All right, any other comments? Yeah? Uh, he's talking about, like, I, I, my favorite stories from DC always seem to be the three or four issue, like, like you say, you get the story started and wrap it up. One of the most favorite ones I ever had was when Batman fought the Predator. It was like three issues. <laughs> and I always thought, you know, why couldn't they do like an amazing, instead of Batman versus Superman, I always thought that, you know, there you could have a definite good guy, but it also could get bloody, things could happen, and there could be an obvious death. And so, I don't know. Uh, I guess to me, I, I kind of just, was, you know, I agree with that, but I don't know, is there anything maybe that from um, like a, a four shot or something there that might just stick out to you as something that might be a good idea? To so make into a movie? Well, either that or like a premise that's kind of short that, that you, like sticks out for you, I don't know. I'd, I'd totally see him fight a predator. Yeah, that'd be awesome. <laughs> I mean, I would I would like to see a DC. And I don't know. I, my my knowledge of the all the DC animated stuff is not encyclopedic, so this may have already existed. But I'd like to see an anthology animated series, completely different story, completely different characters in every episode, and just explore the DC universe. Uh, wrap it up in one or two episodes, and move on. And move on. And I don't know. Maybe the main character doesn't make it out of that one. But, you know, it's like a little Z-grade character that very few people are aware of, and suddenly they're really interesting. Right. Uh, I, just, uh, I think they're missing an opportunity. Well, it seems like they do a ton with the animated stories that, yeah, I, I don't follow as closely, but, you know, there's Batman Brave and the Bold, and there's, there's other uh, that people say are fantastic. Yeah. So I don't know who's writing those. Uh, but they maybe they should be writing more on the on the, the live action side. Yeah. I don't know. But uh, it's it's very very likely that the animated division has nothing to do with the live action division. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, sure. Like yeah. the people don't even know each other. Yeah. I mean, they might just say, "Hey, animate the story arc from the comics and just do it." Yeah. And don't even, oops, rewrite a new script and all that. Maybe they just. Outsource it and run it through. I don't know, <laughs> but they but they turn out pretty good from from what I understand. Yes. So yeah, they do. They do. Um, I think we're about at time. Any more any more comments? All right. Well, thanks everybody for coming to the first panel of Music City Multicon, and I uh, hope you guys have fun playing tons of games, listening to music, and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. But we'll see you. <laughs>